Praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. We're remembering the birth of Jesus today. The people of Israel and the people of the world have been in bondage and darkness and oppression for years, for decades, for centuries, and for millennia. And then Jesus came and freedom came. And today, as we remember the birth of Jesus Christ, freedom, deliverance, dominion has come in Jesus' name. Why don't you prepare your heart and your life and say, Lord, I know you came. You came for the world. You came for me. Joy to the world. The king is come. That you will raise your voice to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I today. I want that freedom. I want that deliverance. I want that redemption. I want that glory that man lost at the garden of Eden to be brought upon my soul, upon my life. That seeks to become totally, completely different in your heart, in your life. Turning you around. Bondage to sin, broken. Bondage to bad habits, broken. Bondage to rebellion, bondage to the devils, to Satan, all broken. The Lord came to set us free. And that freedom is here today. And as we remember, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the coming of Christ, that you will receive his coming, and the benefit of his coming, the profit of his coming. The goodness of his coming. Will come in your soul. Come in your spirit. Come in your life. That you will not refuse. You will not reject. The blessing he brought. Salvation, freedom from sin, redemption, righteousness, total liberation that Christ came and brought. That that liberation, that redemption, that freedom will be yours. Christ has come. He arrived. He came. And because he came, that's why the yokes are broken. Because he came, that's why the fetters are broken. Because he came, that's why freedom also came. Not you today, the chains and the fetters and the bondage. The ties you down to the mundane things of this world that all that you call that bondage will be broken out of your life. Total freedom. Total redemption. Freedom from sin, freedom from sickness, freedom from Satan, freedom, freedom, the highway to the promised land, highway, glorious way, express way to the promised land. Pray that the Lord will open your spirit. Open your heart. Open your life. Open your very inner man. That this freedom will be yours.
Let the king come in. Let the deliverer come in. Let the savior come in. Let the Lord, our righteousness, let him come in. His coming will bring liberation, freedom, deliverance, redemption, dominion. He has come. Joy to the world. Peace to the world. Glory on the earth. For Christ, the Savior, the Liberator, Deliverer, Redeemer, He has come. Let Him come in now to your heart. And you will be free. In Jesus' name we pray. If you believe God is here and God is answering your prayer, in Jesus' name we pray. If you're opening the door, opening the door for the Redeemer, Deliverer, and the Liberator to come into your heart, your life today, in Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you, we bless your name for your love. For you love the world so much that you gave your only begotten Son. That you so ever in this world and in this country, in this place today, we believe we we'll have life eternal, life abundant, life spiritual, life conquering, life prevailing, life overcoming. Lord, we pray that today that life that Jesus brought from glory will come in every heart, every life in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, you come as Savior, you come as healer. You come as deliverer. You come as liberator. You come as redeemer. You come as master, king, and lord over the life of everyone here. In Jesus' name. We pray none will reject. We pray none will refuse. We pray none will rebel. Lord, we pray will not be like the Pharisees that opened their eyes they couldn't see. We will not be like the Sadducees that heard, but they couldn't understand. We'll see, we'll hear, we'll perceive, we'll receive, and we're going to have your blessing in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Thank you very much. We can sit down. Once again, we're rejoicing because Christ came. Once again, we're celebrating because Jesus Christ was born. And on this day, all over the world, there is a remembrance. There is a celebration of the coming of Christ, of the birth of Christ. And as we look at Exodus once again, we're referring to the history of the children of Israel. So that from what God did for the children of Israel, we'll see what he wants to do for the people of God today. Because he says, I am God. I change not. And because of his desires at that time, and because of his purpose, and because of his covenant, he wants to do the same thing for everyone, for every family, for every community, in fact, for every nation, in fact, for the whole world today. What did he do? He came to break the Egyptian bondage, Egyptian yoke, Egyptian oppression over the people of God. Exodus chapter 3. In Exodus chapter 3, I read from verse 7, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have come, it says, I've seen the affliction, 
and have heard their cry by reason of the taskmaster. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the Egyptians, the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Perizzites now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me and I have also seen the oppression the almighty God is saying he has seen the oppression of the people then it says and I have also seen the oppression where will the, the Egyptians oppress them come now therefore therefore because I see it and because I hear it and because I feel it it says Moses come deliverer come Redeemer, come, come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. That was the intention of the Lord. He called Moses, and as he called Moses, he said he wanted just one thing. That the people of God, the Israelites, the creatures of God, will be delivered out of the Egyptian bondage. And do you know that that's what the Lord has done for us? In fact, he told Moses. And he said, what I've raised you up to do for one nation. I'm going to raise up another one. A greater one. A better one, a more righteous one, a more faithful one. I'm going to raise up another one that will do what you've done. But we'll do it not just for one nation now, we'll do it for the whole world. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hug him. And so you understand, we're making a transition from Moses unto Christ. We're making a transition from the one that was to the one that will be. We're making a transition from the one that was with a single nation, Israel. And we're making that transition to another one that will be the Lamb of the world, the Savior of the world, the Lord of the whole world, the Lord of all nations. A transition from Moses unto Christ. What did Moses come to do? He came to set free. He came to deliver. He came to break the Egyptian yoke Egyptian bondage, Egyptian oppression upon the lives of the people. And the Lord said, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him shall ye hearken. Verse 18, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. I will put my words, remember that, I'll put my words of redemption, my words of righteousness, and my words of liberation. I'll put my word, my word of authority, my word of healing, my word of victory, and my word of deliverance and dominion. I'll put my word, my eternal word, the word that operates miraculously. I'll put that word in his mouth, then it says, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass, verse 19, that whosoever will not hack him, 
unto my words which he shall speak in my name i will require each of him well then we understand like the lord planned redemption liberation and freedom for the whole of the nation of israel and he planned it not just for a few people in that nation he planned it for every single soul every single individual in that nation jesus christ has been said that he will proclaim and provide and that he will purchase a freedom a redemption a redemption of the whole world not just for one individual not just for a few selected people redemption deliverance freedom liberation unto everyone freedom from sin and freedom from sickness and freedom from satan he has come to provide for everyone and you receive your portion this morning in jesus name give me a good amen. amen we're going to divide the message to three parts number one the description of bondage and oppression you have to know what bondage is what oppression is and then you'll be able to know what Christ has come to deliver us from. Description of bondage and oppression. Number two, the deliverance from bondage and oppression. After the description, then there's going to be a deliverance for you, for everyone here this day in Jesus' name. And then decision to be free. You have to make up your mind. Decision to be free from bondage and from oppression number one the description of the bondage let's look at exodus chapter one exodus chapter one i'm reading to you there from verse 11 exodus one from verse 11 as we look at the bondage of the children of israel in egypt you're looking at the bondage of every man in the world egypt representing the world and Israel representing the whole, the whole people now that the Lord wants to bring that redemption, that liberation, that freedom, that deliverance to. Exodus chapter 1 verse 11. Therefore, did it set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. That's the description of the bondage. They said task masters over them who did that pharaoh did that who does pharaoh represent he represents satan the devil the wicked one the adversary and that wicked one satan says task masters over the people of the world over every individual to afflict the people of the world to vex the people of the world to torment the people of the world to destroy the people of the world that's what jesus said the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy and then he said but i am come that she might have life and that she might have that life more abundantly as pharaoh said the taskmasters over these people so the devil has said taskmasters tormentors the people that have lived he has set them over every individual in the world that doesn't know christ verse 12 but the more they afflicted them the more they multiplied and grew have you realized the more we have war in the world oppression in the world the more the population of the world is increasing have you realized the more people are suffering in the cities the more the villagers are still rushing into the cities that means then although the oppression is there the biological multiplication of the population is still there and in verse 8 in verse 12 and they were grieved because of the children of israel and the egyptians made the children of israel to suffer with rigor the egyptians made the children of israel to serve with rigor not only pharaoh now but all the people that are subject to pharaoh not only satan now but all the 